Hello, John Hyatt. Um, if you have been keeping up with me at all, you're probably aware that I'm kind of nuts on the subject of the American Revolution. And that's because many of my ancestors fought for American freedom. Um, I just wanted to uh, make this video real quick uh, to kind of make you aware of, recommend uh, to you this book, uh, Nothing But Blood and Slaughter by Patrick O'Kelly. Uh, this is, I think, a four volume uh, set. Uh, I've got the first two. I'll be getting the uh, third and fourth volume soon. But uh, it's probably the most uh, complete and detailed accounting of what happened in the Southern campaign of the American Revolution of anything that I've ever read. Uh, this is history that you will not get in your history books. Um, the American Revolution was actually won in the South between the years of 1780-1782. But hardly anybody talks about uh, those, those battles. The biggest loss for uh, the, the American army happened in May of 1780 at the city of Charleston, South Carolina, where Benjamin Lincoln uh, surrendered his army uh, on May, uh, about May, May the 12th. It's a process took several days, uh, but he surrendered basically on May the 12th and uh, turned over several thousand American soldiers over to the British, who then uh, gave them what was called parole, um, at least for some. Um, my fifth great grandfather, James Gilmore, who's buried in Gillsville, Georgia, was a, one of those who uh, got his parole uh, at the surrender of Charleston. His parole is signed May the 17th. So like I said, it took a couple days after the official surrender uh, before they were able to parole all these, uh, all these American soldiers. Um, the, the siege of Charleston went on for about a month and a half. It started at the beginning of April and it carried on until uh, the middle of May. And it was a very bloody, very hard fought uh, battle. Yeah, I tend to think of sieges as being boring, but the siege of Charleston is not at all boring. Um, there's so much action. Um, actually, more British died and were wounded at Charleston, more, more so than the Americans. However, because of the Americans being trapped, um, they were forced to surrender. Uh, I want to read you a little bit about what uh, Patrick Kelly says about this uh, surrender. And this is from uh, firsthand sources from both British and Americans. So it says here, this is page uh, 118 of volume two of Nothing But Blood and Slaughter. Peebles wrote, they are ragged and a dirty set of people as usual, but more appearance of discipline than what we have seen formerly and some of their officers, decent looking men. Hesh, uh, Hessian Ensign Hartung wrote, the rebels were in the most miserable condition. Very few of them wore shoes and the coats that most of them were wearing were all torn. Another Hessian, uh, uh, one of their leaders, Ewald, wrote that their, appear their apparel was extremely ragged, and on the whole, the people looked greatly starved. And the British Army was shocked that this group of people, this ragged bunch of colonials, had held back the most powerful army on earth for a month and a half. 
So when they surrendered, uh, they marched out. Um, the uh, militia were not supposed to surrender with the Continentals. Uh, 500 of them came out to the surrender anyway. Uh, the rest of them stayed in the city, some of them because they were sick or um, for whatever reason. Uh, you know, some of them were old, some of them were very young. Um, but uh, over the next few days, uh, they were paroled. And the reason was... The, the British just could not keep that many people prisoner. So they had to do something with them. And so they paroled them. And the deal was supposed to be, you go home and live in peace. But uh, the British then broke their own parole. And they uh, issued an order that said, if you don't sign up to fight against your own neighbors, then you'll be considered an enemy of the crown and you're liable to be hung. So most of the, uh, of the militiamen uh, who fought and were paroled at Charleston uh, took up arms again to fight, fight against the British. That included James Gilmore. Interestingly, in his parole, or rather in his, in his pension application, in James Gilmore's pension application, he says nothing about Charleston, even though we know he was there because we have his parole. We know he was there. We know he was he surrendered at Charleston. He doesn't say one word about Charleston. And um, as it is with many service members, um, those were memories he did not want to bring back up. It was, uh, it was something that I'm sure that he was ashamed of and humiliating and it was a, a dreadful battle and he didn't want to remember it and so in his uh, pension application he doesn't say anything about it but he was there and we have his signature on his parole from charleston anyway i'm proud of him i'm proud of all my ancestors who uh, fought to preserve my freedom in this free country, may it stay free.